New Life, it's so good to be with you today. I hope you have a great Friday and an awesome weekend ahead of you. Hey, this past Sunday in his message, Pastor Doug had this powerful line. He said, I refuse to hold back on the Savior who went all in for me. Today, we're going to lean into this theme a bit more by talking about a right perspective on worship in response to the Savior who went all in for you and for me. This is what God's Word says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Now, I don't know about you, but in my own experience, when talking about worship, I often hear people comment on the sound of worship. Maybe you've commented on the sound of worship. I certainly have in my life quite a few times. People say things like, man, their voice sounded so good. The guitar playing was awesome. The drums were powerful. People comment on the way that worship sounds. And let me just make a side point here. I am so incredibly grateful that our worship teams release an outstanding sound as they lead us into the presence of God. But let me submit another thought to you today. While we might be concerned with the sound of worship, I want to say that God is more concerned with the smell of our worship. I'll say it again. While we might be concerned with the way worship sounds, God is more concerned with the way that our worship smells. Now you might be wondering, Dan, what on earth do you mean by talking about the smell of our worship? That doesn't really make sense. Well, when you open the pages of scripture, you would see that when people offered up right sacrifice, right worship before the Lord, there would be times where it would mention that it was a pleasing aroma to God. It had a smell to it that pleased the Lord. Friend, your worship on Sunday morning certainly has a sound to it, and that sound might be good, but hear me out. Our day-to-day worship has an aroma to it, a smell, and it can be a beautiful smell or it can be not so beautiful as well. Now, in light of this, I want to take us back to our passage, but this time reading it from the message paraphrase. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Friend, worship involves what you say to God directly, directly to him. God, I love you. God, I honor you. God, I thank you for saving me. I worship you. You're powerful. You're loving. You're kind. That, that's worship with our words, and that's part of what worship is. But I want to say this as well. Worship is also when you take the ordinary stuff of life and do it as if it were unto the Lord as worship to him. For instance, I believe it's a pleasing aroma of worship to the Lord when you lead your family with care gentleness and integrity. It's a pleasing aroma when you love and and honor your spouse. It's a pleasing aroma before the Lord when you honor God with your finances. It's a pleasing aroma when you work unto the Lord, even though your coworker might be a little difficult in the process to work with. It's a pleasing aroma to the Lord when you refuse to enter into that negative gossip-filled conversation. It's a pleasing aroma to the Lord when you set your mind on good things instead of bad things. It's a pleasing aroma unto the Lord when you study hard at school and refuse to skate by knowing you're doing it for God's glory. It's a pleasing aroma to the Lord when you build up the people around you instead of tearing them down. Friend, we can do the ordinary stuff of life as worship unto the Lord, and in the process, it is a pleasing aroma to him. In fact, elsewhere, Paul would say it like this, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. And so when Paul remarks, in view of God's mercy, present yourselves as living sacrifices, I don't think he's thinking about the 75 minutes on a Sunday that that we dedicate to Sunday service. No, I believe he's communicating in light of the fact that Jesus has offered up all of his life for you, live all of your life for his glory. So today I want to shift our perspective for a moment. Don't just view Sunday as worship. Yes, that is worship. 
Don't do, though, view it only as that. Instead, view your entire life as worship because that right there is biblical worship. So here's a few questions to ask as we go into our weekend. In the little or the large decisions that I make, in the way that I lead my family, in the, the way that I approach my studies at school, in the way that I work at my job, how does it smell to the Lord? Is it a pleasing aroma that gives glory to God? In, in what ways can I operate differently in my life in, my, in order that my entire life is a pleasing aroma of worship before him? Here's another question to ask. Do I only view Sunday as worship or do I view my entire life as worship? Here's the reality. When we shift our perspective, we will be more intentional in viewing the ins and outs, the everyday things of ordinary life as an opportunity to lift up God, to lift up Jesus who went all in for you and for me. So let me encourage you. Let's view our entire life as worship unto the Lord. It will change our perspective in the way that we carry ourselves. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you went all in for us. I thank you that you didn't hold anything back when you went all in for us. In fact, you gave up your life for us. So today, God, I pray that we would view our entire lives as an opportunity to be beautiful worship and aroma unto you. God, I pray that in all our decisions today, as we go through our weekend, that they would be God-honoring, God-glorifying decisions. Lord, I thank you for each and every person. Bless them as they step into a new weekend. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, church, have a great weekend ahead of you. We will see you on Sunday.